Okay, next you've probably noticed that a couple of additional options have been added to your WordPress dashboard. Now, Genesis will have been added, obviously, um, assuming you're using Genesis as your framework, which I obviously think you should do. And um, your child theme may be added depending on what child theme you're using. Now, if you're not a podcaster, you probably shouldn't be going for App and Dip and D because obviously there are specialist child themes focused on podcasting. Whichever child theme you aim for um, will probably be added within your WordPress menu as well. So let's have a little look into Genesis here. So Genesis initially, if you click on theme settings, there's a couple of things that um, you should be aware of in here as well. First of all, it's custom feeds. Now, uh, WordPress has feeds associated with it. If you're not sure what feeds are, well, it's important for you to become aware of this. This is basically an RSS feed, which stands for really simple syndication and is a way of sub subscribers to find out about the latest blog post that you have published. And it's also a way for you to make aware other sites of the fact that you've published a new post. So feeds are important. Uh, if you don't know much about it, read up about it. Now, it may be the case that you want to use a third party service such as FeedBurner. There are pros and cons for doing so. Um, if you're going to use it, then I recommend actually using what's called my brand in FeedBurner and using displaying your domain name. So I've already got the setup for digitalmarketingradio.com. That's where I set it up in here. I will probably set up something similar for businessbookofthemonth.com. So that's at um, uh, feedburner.google.com um, and then just um, search for my brand from there. Um, so the feed is important. If you want to set up that, then obviously go inside there and do it. Uh, there's pros and cons, as I say, it's not absolutely essential, but it's important that you know about it. Um, the next thing I will do is scroll down further here and just show you the header and footer, and footer script section, uh, because that is very important as well. Um, you will want to include certain scripts within there. So what kind of scripts would you want to add in there? Well, to begin with, um, Google Analytics. Um, so within Google Analytics, you'd want to go to admin and set up a new property. And um, what I am going to do is I'm going to set up a business book of the month um, as a new property here and enter the website URL and um, select the industry and create a tracking ID. And once I do that, then I'm going to go back to the theme and um, copy and paste that into, uh, I believe it's the header actually section, that one goes to. But whatever script you're using, it will say where to insert it. It's generally within the header section, so it'll say immediately before the slash head tag, insert your, uh, your script. So you copy and paste it into there and save settings. If for whatever reason it needs to go into the body, then it needs to go in here. And again, remember to save the settings there. So I'm going to go away. I'm going to get my Google Analytics script and I'm going to insert it in there. And um, if you're at the same stage, then you go ahead and do it too. Next up, I'd like you to click on SEO settings inside the Genesis tab. And there are a few things that I'd like to make you aware of inside here. So first of all, uh, the Google Plus Publisher URL. So this is your Google Plus um, profile URL. It must be a business um, URL, not a personal account. To be honest with you, Google Plus is probably less important now than it actually used to be, but who knows how important it's going to be in the future. It's probably a good idea to tell Google what website is associated with your Google account and vice versa. Um, so if you go to Google Plus Brands, just search um, for Google on that. Um, create a Google Plus page if you haven't done already. I've just created one quickly for Business Book of the Month. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the URL from the top of that page and then go back to my Genesis settings and paste that inside there. In fact, I'm going to save settings just now just to make sure that, that is saved in there. As a few other things down here um, that are important to make you aware of here. Firstly, uh, the homepage document title, the homepage meta description. These, these two things here are very, very important because it de this depends on how your website is displayed when people find it within Google search results. So what's displayed in, in terms of title 
and description and search results. So you need to get that spot on there as well. Now um, I've got a, a document here just to the right hand side that I could copy and paste something from. So I could quite easily just call the title Business Book of the Month podcast. However, from an SEO perspective, that's probably not the best thing to do. So what else could I do? Well, there's a great little tool that's available on Moz actually. Um, so if you just search for Moz title tag preview tool that'll, that'll come up on Google and um, it hasn't changed since 2004 actually so if you copy and paste your proposed page title in there and click cuts me Google then it'll show you roughly what your page title will look like in Google search results so here you can see that you can actually probably have a little bit more text it's a good idea of course to have your brand name the name of your business in there but you can have a little bit of descriptive text and from an SEO perspective that descriptive text that in there is very 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 important so what you need to be doing is incorporating hopefully a keyword phrase in there that's relevant to your business as well so I'm going to go to another Google tool now called the Google keyword planner tool now you actually need a Google AdWords account for this but it's um, you don't need to be spending on Google AdWords so if you haven't got an account um, on Google AdWords sign up just now um, you don't have to start any paid campaigns but then search for Google keyword planner tool and you'll get to this kind of tool so what I've done here is I've searched business books within the keyword planner tool and it's given me a few suggestions of how much people search per month for that particular keyword phrase but in addition to that it's given me other keyword phrases that are related to that other phrases that people do type in so things like management books best business books business book books on business and I can see the search volume for those kind of phrases as well now something that really jumps out at me probably is best business books because that will be core to the audience that I'm trying to attract and also loads of people search for it per month so if people are searching for best business books then I'm sure they'll be interested in actually listening to a monthly podcast which is about the best business books and reviewing them so I'm going to try and incorporate that phrase within my page title so I'm going to go back to the Moz tool which is here and copy and paste the enhanced um, version in there and click on the cuts me Google and that fits in very very nicely so I'm really happy with that so that's the 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 business business book of the month podcast which is the, the the title of my business as it were but also best business books it summarizes what I offer so that's a lovely title to have within Google search results and it gives me a better opportunity to rank for that keyword phrase best business books however there's a description underneath here as well and I need to actually have a description that is slightly less probably than 160 characters and there's another tool that you can use to see what your title and your description together so this is a URL of it so I'll just say it's uh, seomofo.com slash snippet hyphen optimizer dot html so you can see that at the top of the screen there as well so what I'm going to do is copy and paste the title into there I'm going to copy and paste um, a description that I've written which could hopefully be alright which is there so business book of the month is a monthly podcast discussing the best business books hyphen hosted by David Bain Mark Asquith Colin Gray and Chris Marr and the URL so the URL is going to be let's see copy and paste that from my website into the tool which is um, there and there we go underneath here is what it would look like in a Google search result. Business Book of the Month podcast, best business books. And now, if you've seen, I've also incorporated the phrase, incorporated the phrase best business books within the description here. Um, so it helps um, because what Google can do is they can bold the phrase here that people search for. So, for instance, I'll show you that in the Moz tool. If someone searches for best business books, then what tends to happen is Google highlights, Google bolds the words which are incorporated within your search phrase there, making it slightly more likely 
I think that people are going to click through that search result and they'll do the same kind of thing with the meta description maybe as well. So if you can include that within your description, um, so I'm really happy with that. So um, I've got my meta description sorted there, um, which is here. I've got the URL, which is obviously going to be the home page of the website, and I've got the title of the website there. So what I'm going to do now is I've got to copy and paste those into Genesis and the SEO settings. So I've got to change the home page document title to that. We are going to copy and paste the meta description into there. And we are going to scroll down and click the save settings button. Very, very important to make sure everything is saved. Now there's lots of other options within here, within the Genesis SEO settings. But the good news is that generally, the settings that are default are probably the ones you want to go for. So there's nothing else that's essential for you to be really, really aware of and actually changing the settings for just now. Of course, you can go through that. You can see what everything's about, but that's all we need to be doing at the moment with regards to the Genesis SEO settings. And finally, I just wanted to show you this. So this is um, Genesis Import Export. And um, it's unlikely that you're going to be using this, especially if it's a fresh Genesis installation that you're working on. If you've previously used Genesis and you've got um, um, an amended version of settings um, saved locally on your computer, you can import that into your theme here as well. Likewise, um, if you're actually exporting your existing settings to use somewhere else, you can do that from here as well. But again, if it's a fresh Gen Genesis installation and you're just using it for the first time, don't worry about this section here. Now let's move on to the section that's going to make the biggest difference to the actual design of your WordPress powered website. And that is the settings, um, all the different settings within your child theme. Now this is not within the Genesis section, it's in whatever child theme you have selected. And I'm afraid to say that your settings and your options within your child theme are likely to be very different compared with my options. So I, of course, have gone with uh, Appendipity themes and specifically the Marin Pro theme from uh, Appendipity themes. You could have gone for a child theme designed by the Genesis people themselves, Studio Press, or perhaps by another third party developer. And that's completely fine as well. You need to go for a design that's right for your business. And there are hundreds, possibly even thousands of Genesis child themes out there that you can choose from. I've gone for this one, but what I will do is I'll give you a brief run through of the kind of things that I will be changing, I can be changing myself here, and that will give you a feel for what may be possible within your child theme as well. So uh, I've just selected Appendipity in the side of the menu here as well. So to begin with, uh, it's just a summary of what I can do. But let's just move on to the first main section, which is site-wide style. So um, if I move my screen across here and scroll down, then it shows you the kind of options that you've got in a really decent child theme. So starting off here, I've got my default um, color scheme, which is the dark on the top. I've got the light one I can choose for, or, or also the dark one I can choose as well. And I've got loads of different um, color schemes as well. But let's just um, show you what the site looks like at the moment. So that's what the site looks like at the moment. So that's a, a blog post or um, a podcast post there. So I'm going to put it back to the light theme and um, save the changes there. Um, go back to the site-wide style and I'm going to go back to the post and refresh it and it shows you instantly that's the design change as well. So if, if that's the kind of color scheme that you may prefer then or I may prefer then, then I could go for that of course. Um, let's have a quick look at the dark scheme as well so do something similar for that there as well and uh, go back to the blog post refresh that and maybe I possibly didn't save everything actually or maybe I did it too quickly. So refresh that page I'm still in the light setting there as well so I, I should be on dark Make sure I've saved everything. And I'm um, pretty sure I should be on dark now. I'm going to refresh the page and here we go. So that's the dark setting. So um, I'm not sure if I like that as much as the original one, to be honest with you. I reckon I'm going to go back to the, the default one. So default one, um, it's going straight back to there. 
um, refresh the page just to confirm and there we go that's the default one there so I'm I'm satisfied with that we've got loads of different color schemes as well now these are just default color schemes now I could um, like for instance change it to blue here and um, it's just refreshing automatically actually I don't even have to save it here so your child theme may behave slightly differently so that's going to blue there as well um, I don't like that as much um, but there are loads of different color options that I can go through that are standard and I don't even have to stick with the standard ones um, there are loads of different bespoke templates that I can actually set up myself by um, selecting link colors and button colors for everything so I can really go through just every different color I can imagine here and while we're here I'd like to show you another website actually. So this is actually the six digit color code. So for the web, um, every single color has a six digit code there and you can match it. And that, that, that's basically the code that goes to actually create the color within the source code of your website. So I'd like to show you another website called colorhexa, colorhexa.com. And if you enter any color here, um, what it does is it not only gives you all the color codes and the different um, um, versions of that color um, it also shows you color schemes matching colors as well complementary colors so it will help you come up with different color styles so if you particularly like one color then use this website color hexa get the six uh, six digit code for it put it in there and it'll show you some matching colors it's a wonderful way of coming up with new color schemes um now i've 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 had a look at a few of these and i'm not entirely sure that i like them as much as the original one i might play with a little bit more there are loads of different options here obviously i could i could play about it with it, with it for a long long time but i think at least for now I'm going to stick with a default scheme. So that's a default scheme back there. I, I quite like the the original orange and the, the hover for the, the orange play button there as well. So I'm going to keep it at that just now. But back in the site-wide option within the Appendipity control panel, um, there's lots of other options down here as well. Uh, there's options to control the body font. So I could change the, the font family that I would prefer to use. The heading font style, the background color image. So at the back of the website here, um, that would probably set an image at, uh, um, around the back of all the, the text here if I wanted to do that. So I could test that and see what it looks like as well. Um, what else could I do? I could add post info. Well, that's that's enabled at the moment. So essentially, if I publish a post, then it will display the the date, the author name, and the comments there as well. I could enable that or disable that. It is uh, enabled by fault there, uh, by default there. So loads of options there, and that's just in the first section there of the Appendipity section, site wide style. Next in the list of Appendipity options is the message bar so what's the message bar well let's go and scroll down and have a look at this so it's enabled at the moment but there's no text in here and i'll show you what it is actually if you have a look at the demo version of the maro pro theme that i'm using you'll see at the very top it says welcome to the maro pro theme click here to buy this theme so that is the message bar that's the text that um, is there in the message bar and what I've done is I've written something that I can use myself within the message bar section. So let me copy and paste that from just outside the screen here. Go back to the section um, within the, the WordPress dashboard and inside the site-wide message bar editor. I'm just going to copy and paste. Welcome to Business Book of the Month. Click here to subscribe to the podcast in iTunes. So I just want to do that um, to have something visually where that would go. Now let's um, go back to the posts. We will refresh this page and ta-da! Welcome to Business, the booth, uh, Business Book of the Month. Click here to subscribe to the podcast and iTunes. Now I have actually copied and pasted that from Word and that's a lesson for you because I'm not sure if it's actually kept extra styling in there. I don't particularly want that font. So You'll see the font welcome to is slightly different to the font here so let's go back and have a look at hopefully we can have a look at the code behind here so in the message bar the text option there and look at all this horrible 
extra stuff that's been copied here from Microsoft Word. So lesson number one, do not copy and paste directly from Microsoft Word if you are wanting to add something to your WordPress blog. So what I'm going to do is I'm copy and paste it into Notepad instead. Copy and paste it from there and try again. Save changes and I'll go back and refresh the page. So go back to the blog post, refresh this page. And here we go. Welcome to Business Book of the Month. Click here to subscribe to the podcast and iTunes. Now see the, the, the font there is as I would actually want it to be. That matches there. So really, really pay attention to small things like that. It makes a massive, massive difference. So the other thing that I want to do now is I'm going to add a link in there. Now, of course, I'm just setting the site up at the moment. Um, so because of that, the podcast doesn't exist in iTunes, but hopefully it will do in a month or so. Um, so message bar here it is um click here to subscribe to the podcast itunes so i'm going to go back to the visual ed editor here as well i'm going to highlight this text and copy and paste just the home page in there and add link and save changes there as well so let's go, go back to the blog post page and refresh this and there we go, that's the link that appears there as well. So that's just a link back to the home page. What I will do, but um, I'm just in the design stage at the moment, is when the podcast exists in iTunes, hopefully at some point in the next month or so, then I will change the link when we're, we're starting to get some visitors to the website. It's not that important at the moment, but I just wanted to show you from a design perspective how to change the message bar. Okay, next up I want to have a look at the site navigation because of course you've noticed that um, there's no menu or anything like that at the top of the site here. You have a look at the demo site, the Marin Pro site, and it's got all this lovely menu section up here. So let's go back to the settings in here as well. Now within the Appendipity settings, all I can do here is change the color. So I could easily do that if I wanted to do that, but if I'm not going to change the color of the main font and then the main play button being going away from orange then I'm probably going to keep this the same or at least I'd keep this the same for a while and this is of course where I could use the color picker remember the the the, the color hex picker um that I showed you in the last video so what we could perhaps play on doing is by introducing other other colors into the section here maybe i could find a nice green um that that go works nice for the navigation menu but keep the orange for the play button just show you that at the bottom of the screen and and maybe that might work quite nicely and just differentiate my slight uh, my site just a little bit differently but to be honest with you by the time i get all my own images in here now i'm going to um replace this actually with my own logo so instead of actually having my logo at the top, I reckon I'm going to have a logo here as well. And then I have pictures of people taking part here as well. So by the time I have that, and it's different, um, significantly different obviously to the demo for theme, then that's going to differentiate the site, I think, enough. Uh, you don't want to be uh, necessarily changing it completely from the existing template that you get. But anyway, um, the menu system. So what I can do within here is change the color. Um, I don't want to do that at the moment, but what I do want to do is show you where to add the menu. That's very important. So what you need to do is hover over appearance and then click on menus. And in this section here, you'll see this is where you control your menus of your WordPress uh, powered website. So you see there's no web menu set up at the moment. So I'm just going to call this one primary. And I'm going to select the create button link here on the right hand side. Now, as you can see, um, I've got some additional options here now as well. Um, it says um, auto add pages. I'm not going to tick this at the moment. I just want to manually select uh, the pages that are added to the menu. But you, you see it also says theme locations. So primary navigation menu and secondary navigation menu. Now I already use one of the Appendipity themes for my digital marketing radio podcast. So I know that the primary navigation menu is the one that I'm talking about here. The secondary navigation menu is actually the one that's used for the social icons. We'll get onto that in a bit, but let's click on the primary navigation menu. That's what we want to um, associate the primary menu with. So I'm going to do that and then save menu. 
And then once we've done that, then we can start to think of adding pages to it. So I don't have any pages that I've created within WordPress so far. If I want to create a page, all you do is you go to page um, and add new here as well. However, as there's a sample page already created, I'm just going to add that to the menu just to show you what it would look like there as well. And you can also um, change the navigation label, but you can also drag and drop pages into sub parts of a menu. So in other words, it can be either um, menu sections by themselves, or it can be part of an existing section of a menu. So I'll show you what I mean within Myron Pro. So obviously you've got templates, but um, our, the archive page isn't a section by itself. It's a it's a page within there. So templates, layouts, podcast shows, these are separate pages, but there are sub pages within these pages. And that's how the, the menu structure works here. So back to businessbookofthemonth.com. Let's save the menu here and go and have a quick look at what it actually looks like on the site. Back to the site, refresh this page, and there we go. We've got a sample page in there as well. And if you see, you actually click on the page, then this highlights orange. So it highlights orange when you're actually on the page itself. So I'm going to click on the back button, go back to there. Obviously, the menu system will look a lot better when there are more pages in there. But that shows you exactly how to go about setting up your menu system within this child theme. Maybe slightly different, of course, for your child theme. And whatever child theme you're using, you're going to have to figure it out for yourself, I'm afraid. Next up, you're going to want to personalize the header section of your website. Now, this is something that you want to take a decent amount of time over because it, the header section obviously is at the top of every single page virtually of your website, just depending on your styles. So that's something that people are going to see first when they hit your website. So what have we got down here? So app and header option, um, and then we've got the show primary default header that's enabled. And we've got also got some option here about uploading a, an image here as well. And at the bottom here, we've got a custom header section. So Let's explore that. So first of all, if I disable that and click on the save changes in the right hand side there and then go up to the blog and refresh it, you can see that um, the actual home page heading of Business Book of the Month and the, the, the description underneath that just doesn't appear whatsoever. So that's why I said in a video quite some time ago that the actual title tag um, that you have underneath your main heading may not necessarily appear depending on the style of your site. So if you wanted to do something completely personalized here, then you would use the custom header section and enable that. And you see the options here are almost limitless. You can actually design a header. It's suggesting an image size of up to that width, 1152 pixels there for the width of the site there. Now, if you are designing your own um, bespoke heading template, then please bear in mind responsive design. So test it in tablets, test it in mobile devices, make sure just everything looks good. Um, generally, if you've selected a child theme yourself, you've selected it because you like the, de the, the core design and look and feel of it. So you're probably unlikely to want to do that and you'll probably use the, the primary default header. But what you may want to do is add your own logo uh, for, for, of course, within here, within uh, the site at the moment, uh, there's no real logo in there. In fact, if I refresh the page, um, then the top section still isn't enabled. So that's enabled there. So I need to click on the save changes button there. And hopefully the header section will then appear if I refresh the page in the blog. And indeed it does. So that's back to business book of the month and the description underneath here. Okay. So logo. So I may want the logo to appear within here, or if you recall the actual home section of your website, you can you can feature. Um, if you recall the the the, the Marum Pro demo, um, you can feature your logo here as well. That's probably what I'm going to go for personally. I like the idea of having text up here. Um, if you know SEO, then that's a, an H1 heading. This is an H2 heading. So that's a really great starting point when it comes to telling search engines what your page and your site is about. But it also helps readers as well, and it helps the site load quickly as well. However, 
I completely get it that some businesses want a logo on the top here instead. So if that's the case, then for this particular child theme, you would upload your logo. Now, I just put in one image here myself personally, so you can upload any logo you want. Um, now, trust me, this is going to look bad because it's not a logo that's designed um, for the site really and um, it's um, an image digital marketing radio that I use on another site but anyway let's have a look at the home page just to see what it looks like with that logo in there so refresh the page and you'll see in there so it's increased quite a bit in size and um, if I scroll over it goes slightly darker gray which is nice so what you would want in a logo is to actually make it um, the same color as your background but ideally probably make the background of the logo transparent not make it too big either uh, you'd probably want it fairly wide but not too high and you'd also want to make sure that it's tested again to make sure that it looks good on a mobile device and a tablet device as well as your website however bear in mind with what I said about it replacing your heading uh, your text heading for search engine so it might not be quite as search engine friendly but if you want to to add a logo in there take time to get the background right make it transparent get all the spacing absolutely spot on and get it tested for every single scenario so at the moment I'm going to remove this logo here because I don't particularly want a logo on my site but if you want a logo on your site you've probably got the option there within your child theme uh, to install your logo so that's my my site back as it were but hopefully if you do want a logo you know what you're doing about it now. Also here I want to mention the home page section within the App and Dibbity Child theme that I'm using and this is a similar option to what I have within Genesis as well. So within Genesis I can actually change the look and feel of my blog pages, my styling of that, but this changes the look and feel of the home page of my child theme. So it may or may not override what's happening within Genesis so this is where you've got to test things as well and just um, be clever about being aware of what is impacting your design of your WordPress site but have a look here you can actually choose from full width the sidebar on the left hand side or the sidebar on the right hand side there generally people um, find they're quite used to the sidebar at the right hand side nowadays the reason why it end up, ended up being like that is from a search engine optimization perspective. Um, search engines tend to crawl the top and the left hand side of stuff before going down to the right hand side of stuff. And people wanted the core content to be higher up within the source code. So that's kind of the background to why sites were designed like that. But people are used to that now. So from a us usability perspective, you don't want to go too far away from norms so I would probably just stick with that now I'm going to want to do a couple of more things within the header section of the home page I'm not that happy actually with the color of the font here I think this is just a little bit too dark so I'm going to want to make that lighter and also the strap line here is a bit meh I, I want to improve the quality of that there as well um, also having a look at the Marin Pro demo, uh, it has got an embed of a latest episode here. I don't really like that um, so much, I don't think. So I'm not going to include that, I reckon, because it, it obviously brings in an extra gap here as well. If you have a look at um, my version of the, um, the actual theme, the child theme, it, it doesn't have that gap there at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just make, probably make this longer, as I have a longer phrase. It, improve the font color so it becomes slightly lighter so slightly more visible and then I'm going to try and incorporate um, this section here so it features uh, the guest hosts so let's first of all have a look at changing the actual wording here so if we go back into now this isn't in Appendipity this is actually within back within the regular settings and general in WordPress here so I've written a slightly different strap line that I've got in uh, notepad just off the screen here so that's a tagline here so I'm going to copy and paste it into there and scroll down to the very bottom and click save changes and then we will go back to the site and refresh that to see if that's made a difference so refreshing the site and there we go we can see the strap lines um, a decent length there 
Um, so I quite like this phrase, a monthly podcast discussing the best business books with David Bain, Mark Asquith, Colin Gray and Chris Marr. I think that summarises what it's about. Uh, it's not so long. I'll have to check it out on tablets and smartphones just to make sure it doesn't um, it doesn't look too, too too bad there on those kind of devices. But the next thing I want to do is change the colour just to make it slightly lighter. So here I need to go back into Appendipity actually. And I was in the header section, so that's correct. So the header section of that. So if I scroll down here, I can see site description text color, and that's what I want to change. So you get a feel for the different colors there. So this is the color at the moment. So it's 555. Um, five, five. Um, so I'm going to actually change it to nines. Um, so let's do that, and then click the Save Changes button at the bottom there. So just check that the save changes have gone through. I think they have gone through. So let's refresh the blog homepage and have a look at the color of the tagline here when we refresh the page. There we go. Look at that. And I think that reads a lot better. It's still not glaring. You wouldn't want to make it completely white, but it looks a lot more descriptive, nicer there. So I'm much, much happier with that. And if you see, obviously, the strap line is quite long there. So it means that the having a player here wouldn't really fit in quite so well. So excellent. Happy with that. Got to stick with that there. Um, now, while I actually just see this, uh, the text at the top here, I want to change this business book of the month to italic, actually. So I'm going to go back into Appendipity options here. And that was in message bar. So scroll down to the text here, just hover over business book of the month because it's a bit more of a brand name, business book of the month. Um, even though it's descriptive, um, it's the brand of the site there. So click save there, done that, go back to the site, refresh the page. And um, yeah, I, th I, th I think I prefer that. I may keep that, I may not, I'm not sure. Okay, welcome to Business of the Month. Click here to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Um, I will get the navigation menu sorted when I get more pages in there. That will take a while to build across the site, so I I'm not going to do that just now, but y you know what you're doing with that. Um, so I've got the description there I'm quite happy with there as well. So what I want to introduce next is this section to feature the most popular guests on your podcast. So to do that, I would need to go to Feature Guest here within Appendipity and turn on, first of all, the Feature Guest area. And let's keep everything by default at the moment and just go on to Artwork. Now, I'm, go I'm going to have some artwork designed for the podcast. So I don't have artwork at the moment. I've just... Um, made a very 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 basic logo so i'm going to upload that just now um open so i'm uploading that just now so you see how basic the the logo is there as well but it's just to demonstrate that um something like that will look okay so i can link to something i can name it something let's just put some test text in there as well just to see what it looks like and we'll click save changes at the bottom there and then go back to the site okay we'll refresh the site now so it's not featuring that so i've got to go back to the one error was found here so i've got to see what the error was found there you must provide a valid url okay i haven't got a valid url so let's copy and paste business book of the month and Save changes, see if that makes a difference. Go back to the site there as well. If things don't work for you, there is generally reasons within the theme. So it's just logical. You go back and you see what's happened and you refresh the page there as well. So there we go. That's the the, the section up there. It's not looking as beautiful as it did here. So um, I will um, work at it a bit and it will look as good as this demo version. Okay, I've come back to the featured guest section of the Appendipity theme, and um, I found this um, cool little number here where you can actually put up and down. And um, if you have it um, basically at the top, I'll show you what happens. Um, save changes, and we'll go back to the site, Business Book of the Month, and refresh it. And that actually makes the image round there. 
and if you go back to the settings there again now I had it halfway um, which is 25 and 25 we will save the changes at the bottom there and go back to the site again and refresh that and that gives us rounded corners basically so um, that setting is what gives us the the rounded image so if you go back to the Marin Pro theme that's what they use to actually get the rounded image there I quite like the rounded co corners might keep it at that but what I'm going to do now is add different guests so um, the four of us are going to be presenting the show so I have saved four different images of all of us uh, if you make sure that you load images in the correct size generally when you've got um, anything to upload because you need to try and keep your web pages loading as fast as possible and if you keep your images the right size and not too big then that's going to be a massive bit behind ensuring that your web page loads fairly quickly okay so um, get the images right here so I'm going to upload the files here so I'm going to have to browse to a new folder, which is Business Book of the Month with the BBOTM. So we'll browse towards that. And that's it open. Okay, so we've got the four images here. So I'm going to first put myself in there. So I wouldn't worry too much in this instance about um, adding to here. I might just add my name as the alt text. And that way I can just copy and paste across to the settings within App and Divity themes. So I'll do that and click select there at the bottom. And um, here we go. So that's the image there selected. So the guest one link and the name is what I have to add now here as well. So what I'll do is I'll just add the name and I'm just going to actually keep the link the same as the previous logo. So let's do the link as that because I, I, I get the feeling that it'll say as it did with the previous image that uh, a link is required. So in the future, I'll come back to amend this. I might have a page about myself um, on this site that I can link to, or I might have a podcast episode about myself as well. So click the save the changes here as well. Now, just before we do the rest of the guests, let's have a look at the site to see if that has changed. So refresh the page and indeed it has. So there we go that and it links to the home page as well. So that's starting to look quite nice there. So let's um, go back and do that for the other three guests on the show. So scroll down this page here and get to the next guest which is featured guest two uh, which is of course Mark Asquith. So we will load the file for that there just off the screen there slightly. So I'll just show you what I'm doing and um, uh, let's um, Add the alt text as Mark Asquith and copy and paste it as I did previously. Click select there at the bottom, copy and paste Mark Asquith or sorry, paste Mark Asquith into the name, and we will just use the same link as before. And there we go. And before I add the other guests, I just want to save the changes there just to make sure. Um, that that is saved but I will carry on adding the next one which um, I might as well do it in the same order as listed here so Colin and then Chris so here we are so what we need to do is upload a file so upload Colin next and we will write Colin Gray in the alt text copy and paste his name and click select at the bottom there add his name into the guest name here just use the home page link here as well click save changes at the bottom then all we have to do is just do the one more guest after that which is Chris Marr so we'll scroll down again get to featured guest number four select Chris's image in fact I have to upload it and select Chris open that and we will add Chris as the alt text and select at the bottom as I did before add him in the name and then just use the link as used in previous episodes again I will change this link probably have a page about Chris on the site maybe an episode about Chris whatever it is it's going to be a more relevant link than the existing link. Save changes and that's the changes saved there. So I'm going to go back to the home page, 
refresh that and there we go that's starting to look pretty cool now column gray um the only thing that I'm not quite so satisfied about that image is it's got a white background. Now the actual original image had a grey background so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play about with that and possibly make the background slightly more grey just so that there is that shape around Colin just to make it like the rest and I might see if I can get a shot of Colin um, just zoomed in slightly so his face is slightly larger like the rest of us. Now the only other thing to consider is the fact that there's four guests in there and of course the default version of the theme has five in there. I think four looks okay and it's just a case of figuring out for yourself what looks best but I'm pretty sure that's that that probably looks okay. I could add another in there but it's not absolutely essential to do. If I added a, another in there obviously there's not another guest host at the moment so I would probably do uh, an image with um, a silhouette of someone and saying something like you so to encourage people to actually interact on it so um, there are ways of getting round um, a rigid design and um, obviously because you choose a design because you choose a child theme there are a few elements that you're kind of stuck with unless you go for the completely custom CSS version of it and I reckon that um, if you're looking to use a theme that's pre-existing you're probably not wanting to customize it too much so but it looks fairly good I'm fairly happy with that so let's stick with that at the moment next we're gonna have a look at the audio player option so again in appendipity audio players there in the menu and just scrolling down here we can see that the the main page audio player is disabled so let's enable that just now save the changes and see what that actually looks like um, on the the website so going back to the main website here I I'm going to open it up here there we go and we can actually see the audio player at the bottom of this page so if I scroll down here so that looks pretty cool having it in there but again having a look at the actual Maron Pro demo we can see an opt-in form there as well and I quite fancy that as well so I, I'm not too worried about um, the text here because the text will obviously be taken from the blog post so it is what it is at the moment no problem at all um, it looks better here because it's taking the first paragraph or so of text from the post content but how do we get this opt-in form here to the right hand side well it's not in this section of the menu so what I will actually have to do is go down to the one below which is called opt-in widgets and um, I'm with Aweber so I'm going to select um, Aweber there make sure it's selected there save changes there so this particular theme supports get response Aweber eye contact and MailChimp so that's one of the reasons why it's probably fairly good to go for one of the the really big email providers at the moment um, so that is that selected there but there's no area within this section for you to choose where the form actually goes so what we're gonna to have to do is actually go into appearance and widgets so this this is in the main um, WordPress menu and then you see this option here called appendipity opt-in so what we're wanting to do is have it within the player widget area so home page player widget area so that's about right so let's click add widget now call to action here we can add some text in you for a bit but I'm just going to um, scroll and add some stuff here we can add an ebook e image there as well and see where it says Aweber list name and thank you URL these are really important uh, obviously when you log into your Aweber account then within your account you you'll set up different email lists this is beyond the remit of this course obviously but just to give you an overview make sure you select the right list name so it'll be the same roughly for each email provider um, it's fairly logical thank you page URL is where someone goes once they actually subscribe to you so it could be some kind of um, download link where they get a free ebook or it could just be a thanks for subscribing page so I'm just going to save that at the moment we've got nice lots of nice options there to um, um, to save um, so that's that's really good so we will refresh this page and see what happens and there we go we get the 
text, the idiotic text that I've put there that we'll have to um, obviously change. But I just wanted to see what it looked like roughly. We've got the epi episode there as well. Um, let's go back to the Marin Pro. So Marin Pro just had the text there. We can put an image in there. But bear in mind if we do that, then there's going to be a fair amount of blank space there at the bottom. So I might design it in a way that it doesn't have the bullets there. Maybe it just has the headline, one or two lines of text, and then goes straight to the form. That way it doesn't have excess space there. And then probably what I'll do with the content is actually have um, content underneath here. So have a, a page written here. And then in the widget area at the bottom here, I'll probably maybe have some kind of iTunes subscription option to begin with. And then perhaps another opportunity to opt in after that. So, but when that shows you how to get the, the player in there, how to get the subscription form in there as well. And you see, it's really actually starting to come together. It's looking quite similar to the original Marin Pro demo now. But finally, in this video, I'd like to give a very brief mention to widgets. So widgets is also something that you need to explore yourself as well. So that's an appearance widgets. And um, yours, your widget section might appear slightly differently. Now this on the right hand side are the various sections of your blog or your WordPress Power website, whatever you want to call it. So after post, footer opt-in, and different footer menus. But just because it says footer one, um, it could actually be in the sidebar. So um, it depends on your theme. I'm not entirely sure um, where these menus actually um, are. See, this says primary sidebar widget area. Um, so um, apparently there's a widget called primary sidebar widget area. So let's see if there's um primary sidebar widget area there we go so it is actually here that i'm aiming for so if i want to add more widgets to this area and there are loads of different widgets that are pre-installed and there are also loads of widgets that you can add as well yourself so for instance if i wanted to add a calendar um to this area here um, and give it a title i'm just going to put some, some text in there just to show you where the title would actually appear click save um, and then we'll go back to the site and refresh that page and hopefully there we go that's the calendar down there in the the primary sidebar area so what you can do is within here is you can actually have um nice additional sidebar widgets of course um or you can have custom uh, html or text in there this widget is really useful called text so if you add it to your primary sidebar you just have to drag and drop there um, and then Add whatever content you want. That's the title. That's the content. Let's click save at the bottom there. Um, so make sure this, everything's saved. Go back to the site. Refresh the site. Let's scroll down. And then there we go. There's the text at the bottom right hand side. Um, that's the custom text that I added. Now it's custom text or HTML. So any code that you want, any HTML code that you want can be included there as separate widgets. And that's of course um, how the original demo added their images here. So they've got all the images here. Uh, there'll be short codes here for iTunes and SoundCloud there. Um, that'll be that'll be fairly easy to get and within um, the actual uh, instructions of whatever child theme you happen to have. So there's no point in going into it here because your child theme that you're using will probably be slightly different and it's, it's fairly easy to use. But the most important thing to make you aware of is of the existence of these widgets um, and there are different places. Some themes may have multiple sections with different like footers and sidebars where you can drag and, dra drag and drop widgets and um, you can also add widgets. Now some widgets will appear here based upon the plugins that you've installed. So if you search plugins or you search for widgets online, WordPress widgets, you can find additional functionality you can install into your blog and drag and drop into these sections. So that's something for you to play about with, but just be aware of, it, aware of the fact that um, additional code, you know, will add additional time sometimes, loading time into your into your site. So uh, only add additional functionality if it makes your site looks a lot better and performs a lot better for your users. 
Okay, let's um, now just take a look at the few remaining options within the Appendipity menu system. Now, first of all, we've got the social buttons. So if we see at the moment, by default, we've got all the social buttons on. So in terms of what that looks like on the site, we've got all the social buttons at the bottom of a post. But also if you click on the button next to the player, you see the different social buttons. So it de probably depends on your type of business as to what social button you want to actually keep um, you want you might want to keep them all but generally uh, depending on your type of business you're not going to have clientele maybe visiting your site that is likely to share your site and all these kind of places so you want to make your site as minimalist and as relevant as possible to your target audience so for a business audience I reckon I'm going to take off stumble upon and take off Pinterest as well I could have Google Plus although the jury's out as to how many people actually use it now but let's try to see what it looks like using Google Plus, LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook as you see I've also added my Twitter username there as well where someone actually shares it um, automatically via at David Bain will be added to it now I don't think at this stage I'm gonna have a business book of the month Twitter account separately because generally Twitter is much easier to be interactive when you're tweeting as yourself rather than actually as a brand but we'll see what the future holds I'm not too sure so let's keep those four networks at the moment click save changes and then we'll check out the site to see what that looks like so go back to the home page refresh that and um, yeah that looks pretty cool Facebook LinkedIn Twitter I'm still not sure about Google Plus <laughs> I'm in two minds about that one there um, it kind of looks good with the three blue ones there, I think. I mean, it might even be a design thing there that I'm not entirely sure with. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to take that off just now, and I could possibly put it back again in the future. So let's see what it looks like without the Google Plus there. Click Save there, go back to the home page, and refresh this page, and there we go. Now, I kind of, I think I like that from a design perspective. Now that's not necessarily the best thing to be doing. You need to be thinking vis um, thinking what your target audience need as well as what looks best from a design perspective. But I, I'm going to keep those three networks at the moment. Um, we'll probably do a little survey perhaps with the people that visit the site, see what they prefer as well. Okay, moving f further down here, you've got previous and next posts um, at the bottom of posts. I kind of quite like having that for, from an SEO perspective as well. Lots of options with regards to colors there, but we'll have that on and we'll click save changes. I can always amend that, but I'll be interested to see what that looks like for this particular theme. That's the lovely thing about things, these things. It's so easy to switch things on and off, and it's not really going to be possible to break your site as long as as if you change things within the proper system so the actual controls within um, the child theme or, or the main theme that you've got set up now I'm going to do a similar thing here for related posts again I quite like, like that from an, uh, an SEO perspective lots of options here but default is generally going to be the best you know, you could have it before the comments after the post after the comments it's lovely to have these options here let's put it on as default to begin with check to see what it looks like and then we can revisit that again in the future now because I've only got the one default hello world post just now we're not going to really see it so there's no point in having a look at it just now the footer so there's lots of options with regards to footer background widgets this is all color styles and then the last three options here you probably want need you've got the custom CSS which is um, only something that you tend to use if you're a coder and you really know what you're doing there so if you're not don't worry too much about it if there's something that you want to accomplish uh, from a design perspective and for whatever reason you can't do it within the theme then custom CSS will allow you to do that so you can perhaps ask another coder or a coder to do this on your behalf but don't play about with this area if you're not comfortable with what you're doing import and export well that's about um, if you want to take your settings from this particular WordPress installation to another installation so unlikely just now but that's where to do it if you do want to do that and then just finally theme information that's just just background information about the theme itself you, so you don't generally need to do that however one other thing that you may have noticed 
is at the very bottom of the site it says copyright and then the a link back to the theme on the Genesis Framework WordPress logout and you probably don't want if it's your own site um, to be referencing and linking back to um, lots of other places because that's obviously an additional exit point for traffic from your site so that's something really to think about and you can't control that um, within the normal uh, child theme settings so what you need to do actually is add a plugin a Genesis plugin to do that and that's one area that we haven't covered so far it's plugins and plugins um, can be very very valuable indeed for WordPress so at the next stage we're going to have a look at plugins we're going to begin with having a look at how to actually change the footer section of your site using a plugin but also a few other core plugins that um, you probably should be using as well now in the plugins section of your WordPress dashboard you'll probably see that there are already maybe one or two plugins that have been uh, installed at, by default to begin with and you haven't actually done anything about it um, possibly these two Akismet is um, a good spam protection system and um, Hello Dolly is just um, a, a bit of fun really from WordPress designers it's not a plugin that um, will actually do anything active to your site but how do you actually add new plugins well all you do is you click on the add new button here in the top left hand side and immediately you'll see very very popular plugins and some plugins that um, are recommended um, don't go crazy because what happens of course when you add a plugin is you're adding a bit more software that um, browsers have to battle through before your page is loaded on your site so generally if you have lots and lots of plugins installed on your site your site will load slower than sites that have fewer plugins installed on them so don't go crazy with plugins maybe you, you can have 10 20 or so but once you start having 30 40 50 plugins which a lot of sites have then this can significantly impact the loading time of your site so the first um, plugin that I reckon you should be looking for if you um, use uh, Genesis which you should be using of course so Genesis simple edits is just here so all you do is you click on the install now button and um, it's a very very simple process to actually get a, a plugin installed that's installed uh, once it's installed um, you need to activate it so obviously only activate plugins that you're confident um, aren't going to muck up your site so this one's obviously um, reviewed by lots of people very popular so um, there we go um, all we do is we click on Genesis now the simple edits option appears here underneath the Genesis menu system so that's where plugins go plugins will appear within the menu system generally here now there's no hard and fast rule as to where they might appear they might actually install themselves as their as their own um, core piece of the menu or they actually might disappear under some subsection of the menu so sometimes you have to hunt for where the plugin installs itself but generally it's fairly logical obviously here Genesis simple edits click on that and then here we go this gives us an opportunity to amend the footer text so rather than actually um, write something just now what I'm just going to do is add a bit of text here just to see that it picks up so it's a th this P is the code of a paragraph and that's the ending of a paragraph there so you'd want to keep that in there but I'm just going to test by adding some test test text in there and save settings now this will show you and um, when I go back to the site and refresh it uh, that hopefully that those words test test will be added to the bottom of the site and no it isn't and uh, it's just the original text at the bottom there so I've got to go back here and just see what I've done here so perhaps actually it's this area here that I need to change footer credits text so if I take what I did put in here previously and make sure that I get rid of that and put it back to as it were and add the test test here and then save settings we will see if that makes a difference so we'll refresh the home page of the site and indeed 
that has made the difference there. If you look at the bottom of the screen there, you can see test, test, then copyright there as well. So it's easy to figure out where you need to make the changes. It's impossible to know everything, and that's what designers do. De designers test things out a little bit there as well. If they don't know what's happening, do a little test, save, refresh. Has it made the difference? No, it hasn't made the difference. So revert. Don't um, don't save those changes. Go back to originally how it was and test somewhere else. So that's exactly what I've done there. I've figured out where that thing works. Now, if your site isn't published yet, you're not going to break something just by testing something as simple as that, or it's highly, highly unlikely that you're going to be breaking breaking something. So that's the way you do it. So now I'm just going to uh, go back there and um, do what I need to do to actually um, get my own personalized footer at the bottom. Now, I don't want to completely overload you with plugins here, but um, I do want to suggest another couple that um, are, are certainly worthwhile looking at. Um, so one is, um, which will really help you with your SEO as well, called Yoast SEO. So I'll search for that and um, install that one. So hopefully the search will bring back that in a second. And here it is. Okay, so Yoast SEO. So um, I'm going to click install now and install this plugin. And once I do, obviously I'm going to activate it as well. So activate the plugin button. So it is very, very quick to actually install these. So as you see, when you actually install Yoast SEO, it'll give you an option to start a tour. So that's probably worthwhile doing if you haven't done it before. And this is one of these plugins that adds itself as the main option within your navigation menu in your WordPress dashboard here. So I'm not going to start the tour, but it's worthwhile doing for you if um, obviously you haven't used it before. Um, click SEO there as well, and then you can see um, all the options within here. So there are so many pretty, pretty amazing options. Let's just go through a couple of them. So first of all, when you actually select a post or write a post, so go to posts, add new, or edit an existing one. If you crawl down underneath um, the post itself, um, you can see Yoast SEO has added itself here. So what it does here is it gives you a preview of what the page would probably look like within Google search results. And that's really, really useful. So it'll let you analyze a page, but also select keywords as well. So if I type in business book, um, then it'll actually tell me whether or not I've started um, to do good things from an SEO perspective within with that keyword phrase. So I haven't included it within my heading. I haven't included it within my page URL, which is suggest. No content, obviously, and no meta description. So what I do is I type in what I want the title to be um, in search engine results. So um, let's just copy in something for uh, just for instance, just copy something from this page. Now, here it's showing me that after the word delete, Google will actually crop off the rest of the title. So the title is too long there. So it shows you how long the title should be and replaces the default page heading as the title within Google search results. It'll also show you how long a meta description should be. So here it's too long. It's reckoning a meta description should be roughly 156 characters or less. So these are really good pieces of advice. So your page title um, needs to be fairly short now. Um, it's roughly 50 characters now because Google actually increased the character size reasonably recently and that meant that the quantity of characters you could fit into your page title was reduced in number. So you want to have roughly 50 characters now, including spaces, um, for your title and about 156 characters or slightly less for your meta description. And then your focus keyword in there as well. Um, you also will actually come up with suggestions there as well for different keywords. And um, it'll also give you scores based on a traffic light system of how well optimized your page are, is. Now, you can fiddle about with a couple, a couple of things here, but uh, fiddling about is probably not a good phrase because if you don't know what you're doing here, um, probably best not to do it. Uh, but within here as well, you can do a few things such as stopping search engines 
from viewing a page um, and you can also um, add some descriptions for social shares as well which is very effective um, from um, a social sharing perspective so a really really useful tool there within posts one other thing to mention is Yoast SEO will also produce an XML sitemap of your latest content. What is an XML sitemap? Well, it's essentially um, a, a URL that search engines can follow and this URL will also include links to your latest posts or pages or updated posts or pages on your site and it'll also tell search engines um, how important those posts and pages are in relation to other pages on your site. So what you can do is you can take this XML URL and submit it to what's called Google Search Console. It used to be called Google Webmaster Tools. Um, submit it in there and then Google will automatically be notified when you add new content to your site. So again, going through everything about this is probably beyond um, the full remit of this course, but I wanted to make you aware of this plugin. Uh, it is very extensive, but it could be very important to the SEO success of your website. Now, a third and final plugin that I would like to take a look at with you is something that will help you produce a contact form. So let's click Add New, and there's a plugin that I have in mind. So I'm going to search, I'm going to crawl across here first of all, and search for Fast Secure Contact Form. So I'll search for that, and this plugin here has had over 400,000 installs. So I'm going to install that here on businessbookofthemonth.com, and then once it's installed, which it has been done, is click activate there so it's activated there now within the plugins menu you see FS contact form so if I click on that and then within the basic settings I can see the short code for this form which is this here so I'm going to copy and paste this here and then I'm going to create a new page add new just called contact okay So that's, that's a new page called contact. So the URL of this page is going to be businessbookofthemonth.com slash contact. So I, I can change the heading if I want in the future, um, but the URL I want it to be just businessbookofthemonth.com slash contact. So I'm going to just paste the short code within there, and then all I'm going to do is publish this page. So let's publish it here. Now that's it published there on the site, and let's view the page. So click on the view the page button, and then when that's done, then a contact form appears there. So that's a wonderful way of getting a contact form securely inserted within your blog. And of course you can include that contact within your web page. Now there's a few settings that you have to get right before um, it will work away. So let's go back to, if I just show you exactly what I'm fiddling with here on the left hand menu, click on FS contact form. Now there's a few settings within here. So where is it going to? Well, it, by default it's selected the email address that I have that's set up um, within WordPress. So I can I can change that if I want to. I'll probably change that to contact at businessbookofthemonth.com or something like that. And um, it's got some standard settings up there, but by and large it's fairly plug and play. You can change things like styles, like fields. Um, there are lots of things that you can play with just to change the look and feel of it. But in terms of what it looks like, well, uh, you've seen what it looks like. You know, you've seen it on a page. You've got your page in there already. So your page is... Um, slash contact. So let's just go to that just now actually. Businessbookofthemonth.com slash contact. Okay, so that's the URL of the page. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste that. I'm just going to add that to the menu as well. So I'm going to go back to the WordPress dashboard and then I'm going to click on appearance and then menus. So remember having the primary menu so you've got the primary menu here. So within the primary menu, you've got your one page. So you've got your contact page here now. Let's add that to the menu. Now we can either add that separately or, or also add that 
um, as a as a page within the sample page section. So I'll add it twice just just to show you it working like that. I'm going to scroll across here and save the menu. Click on the save the menu button. So that's saved there now. I'm going to go back to the site and refresh the page and now we've got sample page underneath that is contact and then contacts the separate section there as well that's because i added it twice just because i wanted to show you how easy it is to add pages there so there we go that is um adding another plugin um the contact form plugin to wordpress so easy to do it's up to you now to go away and find plugins that are relevant to your business. It's challenging sometimes to get an absolutely great plugin, so make sure you select the right one and make sure you don't add plugins just for fun. Only if they make a massive difference to your site, add in plugins. So, plugins is an integral part of the success of the future of your WordPress powered website. And that just about takes us to the end of the course. Now, obviously, you have seen that businessbookofthemonth.com isn't completely finished yet. That's because a lot of the design depends on me having content. So content for the navigation menu and blog posts and podcast episodes and whatever other about pages and things like that that I want to put up. But everything that I've shown you so far uh, will mean that you can do that. And of course, it's also important to emphasize that the child theme Maron Pro, which I used as my basis for my design, isn't necessarily the child theme that you should use. However, you should definitely, in my opinion, use the Genesis framework and then select a child theme based on that. I've shown you exactly how to go about making those child theme changes and hopefully you're quite comfortable with diving in there and doing that now. Of course there's some things that you don't know, there's some things that I don't know, but the secret is is to dive into that child theme and make the design changes through that. And keep a good eye on businessbookofthemonth.com moving forward because I'm sure that by the time you look at the site it will be a little bit more evolved than it appears in this course. So it'll probably be quite interesting to actually check it out and um, see what it's like now. But what did we cover in the course? Well we started off with registering a domain. It's very important in my opinion to keep your domain separate from your website host. I like using GoDaddy and then pointing my domain name, domain name elsewhere. You can use a different provider for that if you want, but I do suggest pointing it elsewhere, retaining full control over your domain name if you do decide to use another host in the future. Number two, selecting a host. When it comes to selecting a host, hopefully I emphasize the differences. You've got um, a shared host, which can be quite cheap, maybe from about $5 a month. Uh, you've got a specialist WordPress host, and you've got other hosts, which can be more expensive. I recommend for most businesses to go with a specialist WordPress host, and that starts off with about $25 a month, which of course is what Traffic Planet hosting costs. Setting up WordPress and HostGator, if you've got a little budget, HostGator is a great option to go for. They'll start off with about $5 a month, so I've shown you how to do that. And also set up on Traffic Planet hosting as well, which is even more simple than getting set up on HostGator. Number five, moving on to why I recommend using a WordPress specialist host. Number six, editing basic settings in WordPress. So once you've got your WordPress installed, you need to make sure that the whole dashboard is set up in a manner that will work for you as a business moving forward. Number seven, installation and initial setup of the Genesis framework. So that's very, very important to get right to begin with. Not very many settings there to get right, but have a look at those videos and get those settings done before you proceed with the design stage. And of course, the main design stage revolves around your child theme. So whichever child theme you select, make sure obviously it's relevant and got good reviews with regards to um, fitting in with the Gen Genesis frameworks. It's got to be a child frame that works with the Genesis framework. But if you choose a design theme based on reviews, popularity and a design that you actually like yourself, then you shouldn't go to wrong. Number nine, widgets. Remember those little bits of code that you can add additional functionality to your sidebar, to your footer, different sections in there. So things like adding subscription code 
for your email um your email provider your email marketing provider will tend to be a widget and then number 10 plugins so plugins are slightly bigger programs that add additional functionality to your core wordpress dashboard so that could be things like uh, things as simple as adding um, lines of text or perhaps improving the seo of your wordpress it could be about adding a contact form or it could be something entirely different don't add too many plugins uh, because of course that may slow down your site but follow the steps and then play around in your child theme and then tell me hopefully in the comments how it went for you i'd love to hear from you as well so that really does take us up towards the end of the course hopefully by now you feel quite a bit more comfortable with what wordpress is and how it can really benefit your business and hopefully by now you understand that you needn't spend loads and loads of money on a CMS, a content management system, or an expensive website design. Yes, there are instances when it's necessary to spend lots of money on a website design, but a lot of businesses spend money that they don't have to. So you need to be clever and invest in the right areas, and um, hopefully that means a little bit of training and a little bit of perhaps design, a few nice logos, just to complement a really nice child theme within the Genesis framework. I think the three most important things that I would highlight is, first of all, don't skimp on hosting. Now, you can perhaps get away with HostGator for a while or a service like that when you talk about their shared hosting service. But if you use a specialist WordPress host, your website loading time can be just half the amount and that can be an incredible difference in terms of site performance and the perception of the professionalism of your brand. Next, um, I would say get a decent site framework and a decent child theme. Look through 50, 100 different child themes. Get the child theme that's absolutely right for your business. And the thirdly, I would say put the work in. You know, spend a day or two re-immersing yourself in WordPress and understanding what widgets do, what plugins there are, you know, what different um, facets of your, your child theme are and uh, how different areas work. Because if you just understand the basics of how it can work, then you'll understand how to lead perhaps a designer in the future and you'll get a designer to do um, a, a WordPress website in the way that you want it done, rather than actually getting the designer to design code in a way that perhaps isn't that efficient. Because there are a lot of designers out there that design beautiful designs, but perhaps in a fairly inefficient way with big bulky images and lots of code behind that. So you want the framework of your site to be very, very, very efficient. And to do that, of course, use the Genesis framework and a decent child theme, and then you can amend that child theme after that. Just a few other thoughts. Now, if you're not entirely confident um, after going through the course, and you've got more questions, please ask questions within the conversation section. Perhaps I may even design another video or two to answer your questions. So give me the, the opportunity to answer your questions. I really would like to hear from you. And of course, if you love the course and you're, you're fired up, raring to go, and you, you, you really got a lot out of it, I would really appreciate a good review. So if you can possibly leave you know, a big five-star rating and review, I would really, really appreciate that as well. And finally, of course, um, I've got um, at least another course uh, in Udemy as well. You should check out my What is SEO course, because SEO builds on what you should do in terms of content marketing after you launch a, a, a blog or a website. But um, that really does take us to the end. So thank you so much for um, staying with me all the way. And um, I will, I'm sure, see you and um, hear from you again at some point in the near future. Bye for now.